Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So my name is Thierry Baffy. I'm uh, the technical coordinator of this project. Uh, this is my colleague Arno Vitomsky, which has uh, the leading of the project. So this project has just uh, started. So I'm uh, invited to present you this project. So this is um, first the consortium of the project. So uh, the consortium is um, composed of uh, 17 members. Uh, five of them are a research and technical organization. So we have um, Prodintech, EPC, TWI, Tignalia, and uh, CEA for that uh, kind of uh, partners. Regarding the um, SM, SME uh, small companies, we have six companies, MBN, ISL, RHP, Prismad, and Delas. We have five large companies, Autotech, GKN, Renisho, MBA, and uh, Fiat uh, Research Center. And we have, of course, EPMA, uh, which is uh, in charge of dissemination as uh, uh, presented by Olivier uh, previously. So this project is about 10 million euro uh, with a contribution from Europe of 8 million euro. And the duration is three years. So you have the, uh, the contribution which is divided by partners. So it's about uh, uh, one third for a large company, one third for small company, and one third for RTO. A few words about the processes which will be addressed in this uh, project. So uh, we, have, uh, we are addressing these five uh, processes. You maybe uh, know all this process. I have just comment to, to make on, sorry, on uh, the pointer is there, on, uh, on the technology. So we have MIM here, which is addressing uh, large volume uh, parts, but uh, of small uh, mass. We have LPBF, that's the name we choose for the project to avoid any uh, uh, conflictual interest with uh, different uh, producers of machine. Uh, so we are uh, addressing parts between uh, uh, one to uh, 1,000, let's say, uh, parts, but uh, again, small parts. Then we have laser metal deposition, which is addressing uh, quite low volume but the part could be as high as uh, 10 kilo. Of course, these figures are roughly, and it can evaluate with, with time. Huh? Uh, we have uh, the hip process, with our, which is addressing also small uh, volumes, but much larger, uh, much wider uh, mass uh, parts. And finally, we have plasma metal deposition, which is addressing parts between 10 and 100 uh, kilograms. Uh, regarding the particle size distribution, we uh, are, uh, with these five processes, we are addressing a large range of particle size distribution, from MIM, with, which is the smallest, to uh, EAP, which is the largest, and PMD, which is using a particle between, uh, let's say, 80 and 150 micron. And of course, you have LPBF between uh, zero and uh, let's say 60 and LMD with a tendency to evaluate uh, in the coming years for sure. And regarding LMD, we are between let's say uh, 30 and uh, 100 uh, micron. Uh, so here is the agenda of my talk. I will uh, give a few words about the concept and the methodology uh, we uh, will uh, address in the, in, the pro in the project. I will uh, give uh, the objectives and uh, give you also the expected impact of uh, the project. So um, first we want to, uh, we, we decided to address two kinds of material, the ferrous one and the non-ferrous uh, uh, metal, uh, powder metallurgy processes. Uh, the processes are all uh, today individually available at Terrell 7 uh, or beyond. And the idea is to uh, work on the material and energy efficiency uh, all, ar all along the, the supply chain. That means from the raw materials, the fluids, the solid, the gases, including the mineral and water, to the finished product. The idea is to demonstrate a new integrated and optimized approach uh, of a set of powder metallurgy production rules. Uh, ready for adoption on the PM market. So the idea is that all along the value chain, we want to have demonstrators that will allow to uh, prove that we gain, uh, we reduce uh, the material consumption, the water consumption, for example. So at the mine site, at the uh, atomization or powder production step, 
uh, at the process step and also at the uh, final part step. And the idea is to address uh, five use cases in uh, aeronautics, automotive, mold, medical uh, industry, and uh, cutting tools. So here you have um, the methodology of the project. So you, you find again the different uh, step of the value chain from the, met from the mineral ores to the metal, the powder processes, the manufacturing processes, and the application. And here you have the materials we will address in the, pro in the project, the powder processes we will uh, study, the manufacturing processes which will be developed, and the uh, application we, which, are, uh, which we are focusing on. Uh, so uh, let me detail all, all of these uh, production routes. So first, uh, regarding the cutting tools, we are uh, intending to uh, replace cobalt. That was the topic of Olivier, so it's a, a real concern today. Uh, remove cobalt, which is used as a binder in uh, cutting tools by uh, FA-based uh, material, which are um, composites with uh, diamonds. This is done by a ball milling, and uh, uh, in, in terms of shaping, we, are, we will be using metal injection molding. Regarding the stainless steel, both 316L and 174PH, that will, they will be atomized by, by either by gas or by water atomization, and the processes which are addressed are uh, laser power bed fusion and metal injection molding, and the application is for medical tool, medical Im implants and medical tools. Regarding the uh, mold uh, application, the mold insert, we are working with a, a, a tool steel, which uh, we will compare gaze and water atomization, and this will be only studied by uh, laser powder bed fusion. Then we, add, we have hard carbon steel, which will be water atomized, studied by uh, LPBF and uh, PMD uh, for automotive. We have Asteloid C22, so this is for the nickel-based alloy, uh, which is uh, gas atomized and will be studied both by LMD and PMD. And finally, we have the two uh, Inconel uh, alloys, 625 and 718, which are gas atomized and will be studied by uh, LPBF and uh, HEP, that is static pressing. Uh, so, uh, Again, the idea is to have uh, a, a demonstrator at each uh, step of the value chain. And uh, for that, uh, we intend to um, monitor uh, the evolution between the current uh, uh, process and the uh, developed process by using KPI for uh, key process uh, indicators. So now I first have to introduce what are the KPI I'm talking about. We have two main KPI. Um, these KPI are used for it, uh, quantify the material uh, and energy efficiency uh, improvement of the process that will be developed. First, uh, KPI is addressing uh, raw material uh, resource efficiency that, that could be uh, calculated either absolutely or uh, relatively, uh, if we, ter if we uh, speak in terms of uh, material yield losses. Uh, the second KPI is the energy efficiency, which again could be uh, studied either absolutely or uh, relatively. And derivated from these two main KPI, we have two other KPI which are addressing uh, to track the impact uh, of uh, the, the, the previous KPI on productivity and CO2 emission. So first we have the production rate and the carbon dioxide emission, which can be again uh, defined either absolutely or relatively. So the idea is to have um, a monitor, a knowledge of the uh, today um, current practice, the today um, emission of CO2, for example, the efficiency, the raw material resource uh, you, you are uh, using today, and to compare that to the developed process. So this is uh, given more into detail with a, a figure for the objectives we, we intend to reach. So here you, you find again, sorry. There it is. Uh, the demonstrator description we have for uh, the, the different step of the, of the value chain and the current practice uh, uh, to be compared to. And for each of this item, uh, of this KPI, we will uh, try to gain a certain percentage at each step of the value chain. The objective on raw material resources is to gain, uh, let's say, 25%. Uh, 
10% on energy efficiency and uh, production route, and more than 30% on uh, CO2 emission. Uh, here I want only to focus on, uh, there is a, a certain number of objectives in the project. I uh, mainly focus here on the project, which, uh, on the, um, the objective which, has, which are related to uh, the additive manufacturing, because as you understand, there is also MIM and HIP and uh, such process in the, in the project. So the objective two of the project is to reduce the raw material resources at the uh, powder uh, process uh, level. Uh, so we will uh, focus on gas atomization, water atomization, and ball milling. Uh, the uh, second, imp uh, the third objective is to uh, study the raw material resources and energy consumption at the additive manufacturing processes step. Uh, the objective five is to demonstrate at TL7 the global integrated powder metallurgy process optimization. Uh, in agreement, of course, with the material performances, the total cost breakdown, and the market volumes. And uh, objective six is uh, to uh, implement a quality and process control. That's key in the, pro in the, in the project. We have a partner, which is called IRIS, which will um, monitor uh, on specific uh, process, specific part of the value chain, uh, the, the improvement we can get uh, compared to uh, the baseline today. Uh, a focus on the work package which is dedicated to uh, 3D manufacturing processes. So as mentioned previously, we are studying uh, three processes, LMD, PMD, and LPBF. So this, uh, this work package is, de uh, is divided into seven tasks. The first one is uh, leaded by uh, Rainy Show and tend to uh, increase the LPBF process e efficiency. The second task uh, intend to increase the productivity of LMD and PMD and uh, is leaded by a TWI. The third task leaded by, leaded by CA uh, is focusing on the possible increase of powder reuse. So that's a concern. We are that about that uh, on standardization. So that's something uh, which is of great interest, of course, for industry. Uh, f task four, uh, which uh, um, uh, objective is to work on uh, replacing, if possible, gas atomized powder by water atomized powder in terms of, of cost that could be of, of interest. This will be uh, um, studied by EPC on uh, mold application. Uh, task five uh, is uh, dedicated to powder granulometry. The objective is to uh, increase as much as possible the particle size uh, distribution uh, in LM LPBF uh, process, for example. Uh, so we know that if we are using uh, higher laser, higher power laser, for example, we could try to use more larger particle size distribution. Uh, task six is dedicated to um, hard carbon steel, which are of great interest for uh, automotive, and that will be uh, led by GKN. And finally, uh, the last uh, task uh, uh, will give the outcome of the whole uh, world package. So that was the objective. Now the expected impact of the project. So uh, here you have a table which gives you the uh, expected uh, exploitation outcomes uh, of the project. Uh, as I mentioned previously, the idea of the project, the objective is to move on the, the new processes, in fact, not the new, but the uh, developed processes from uh, TRL 5 to TRL 7. So uh, on each of these outcomes, uh, we expect that uh, at the end uh, of the project, we'll be able to move uh, progressively to industrialization and commercialization and production. So that will be, of course, led by the main partner which are in the project and, of course, uh, the potential uh, customers and partners which, which will really uh, join uh, these partners. Thank you very much for your, uh, for your attention.